Hi, thank you so much for watching The Louie File. All right, I hope uh, this finds you well today. Today we're going to, you, you're not going to believe it, we're going to conclude this in-depth, lengthy study that we've been in, uh, in the letter of the Ephesians, um, a study of Ephesians. If uh, you've been hanging with me this whole time, God bless you. Uh, we started way back on April 3rd. Uh, today is t July, uh, the, it, the last, uh, the fourth Saturday of July, I think it's the 23rd, I'm sorry I'm not very accurate with that today. So it's been a uh, couple of months now that we've been digging into the letter that the Apostle Paul wrote to the Ephesians, and today we are going to finish it up, and uh, it just kind of came to me just before turning this camera on that a good way to do that would be to... Uh, end in Acts. We started this journey in uh, Acts 19 and uh, looked at what took place when Paul first came to Ephesus. And one of the main events in that chapter was uh, in Ephesus there was a big temple uh, to uh, Artemis or Diana, the goddess. And when Paul started preaching the gospel to them, uh, some people believed and some people got quite irate and there became uh, an uproar in the streets, which would only be expected. I mean, when you start bringing uh, something to the ears of people that they haven't heard before uh, and they have their own identity, their own religious system, their own belief system, it causes conflict. Uh, so in that setting, we read the Ephesian letter and... For just quick review here, very quick review over this whole letter, let me just give you the highlights of what I see in this letter. The first chapter of Ephesians tells us that in Christ we've been blessed with all or every spiritual blessing in Christ in, heavenlies, in the heavenlies, heavenly places, and that God chose us in Him to be holy and blameless. And then toward the end of chapter 1 in Ephesians, we read where God himself raised Jesus Christ from the dead and seated him far above all powers and principalities and gave him, gave him a name above all names, whether named in heaven or named on earth, and that we, in fact, that place our faith in him are his body and we are his fullness. That's a mind blower. Uh, the second chapter gives us a little flashback and it says that you were dead. And you used to be ruled by another spirit, not the Holy Spirit. But even while you were dead, God himself has made us alive in Christ and raised us up and seated us with Christ or in Christ in heavenly places in order that we might display who God really is. That's, that's the goal and the plan. I mean, God created man in his image to begin with. So Christ in us restores that image to uh, the fallen man. Well, meanwhile... Uh, Jews and Gentiles who were divided about God and what it meant to be right with him because the Jews were given the law and the prophets and the sacrifices and the temple. But now through Christ, the Jews and Gentiles both come together as one and, and together, these two groups, uh, the, the dividing wall has been torn down and we are now made into the house of God. The two become one. And in chapter 3 of Ephesians, God tells us that this is the church and that through the church, his manifold wisdom would be revealed to the watching powers and authorities. Oh my, in heavenly places. So then in chapter 4, it says that we need to walk worthy of this calling. And so we need to put off our old man and put on the new man who's, being, who's renewed into the image of the one who created him, which is holy and righteous and, and truth. So stop lying to each other and stop... Stop living sinfully because that's not really who you are, but rather forgive each other. Walk in love because you're a child of love. You're a child of God. He's love. Walk in the light. Walk in wisdom. Uh, get your, your order straight with your husbands and wives and children and slaves and, and slave owners. And then finally, stand in that new identity in Christ and who you are in the armor of God. So here we are in Ephesians 6, verse 18. He's, he's telling us farewell. He says, With all prayer and petition, pray at all times in the Spirit. And with this in view, be on the alert with all perseverance and petition for all the saints. And pray on my behalf that utterance may be given to me in the opening of my mouth to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains 
that in proclaiming it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak, but that you also may know about my circumstances, how I am doing, Tychicus, the beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord, will make everything known to you. I have sent him to you for this very purpose, so that you may know about us, and that he may comfort your hearts. Peace be to the brethren, and love with faith. From God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace be with all those who love our Lord Jesus Christ with incorruptible love. So, that's the uh, end of Ephesians. And I would just like to point out a couple things here. And then we're going to move into Acts. I think it's chapter 20, but I'll, I'll make sure in a moment here. So he's saying pray and, and, and give petitions at all times in the Spirit. Uh, be on the alert. Persevere. Uh, care for others. Stand in this battle not only for yourself against these fiery darts of the enemy and the manipulation and the deception, but stand in the faith and in the armor for others. And he says in particular himself, he says, pray that I might have boldness to share the mystery of the gospel. Now in Colossians it tells us the mystery is Christ in you, the hope of glory. So Paul's big message wasn't just that Christ died for us on the cross, was buried and raised again, but that we too have died. According to Romans 6, he explains it very well, that we've been baptized into Christ's death, and so therefore we have been raised with him too to walk in new life. That's the mystery. It's not just that Christ is who he said he is, but that not only his death uh, cleanses us and gives us forgiveness, but it, it, it takes care of the sinner that we might walk free of it. What an amazing message it is to, to share. But, you know, I'd like you to notice, he's an ambassador in chains. He, most people believe that the Ephesian letter was written while Paul was in a prison in Rome. Uh, that's why Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians are most of the time known as the prison epistles or the prison letters. They were all written uh, while he was imprisoned. Uh, but, you know, in Ephesians 3... Verse 1, he calls himself the prisoner of Christ. And then Ephesians 4, verse 1, he says, a prisoner of the Lord. So he didn't see himself as an uh, inmate of the Roman penal system. He saw himself as a prisoner of the Lord, a prisoner of Christ. So, you know, wherever he went, whether he was physically in chains or not physically in chains, whether he was in a boat on the sea or in the desert, he saw himself as a prisoner of the Lord. In other words, the Lord is his boss, his master, his guard, his keeper, his, his ruler, uh, his king, his jailer, if you will. So Paul, he, Paul learned to see through appearance, and he, he, learned, he knew that the word of God was not chained, uh, and that if he could just get these letters out, how astounding is that? These letters came from a man who was in, imprisoned for sharing his faith, and here we are, here I am in 2018, declaring to you the same message. It's astounding to me. So uh, we're finishing up the letter to the Ephesians. So now let's look back in Acts. I got a squeaky chair here. Um, in Acts chapter 20. Now there's a lot of, it's got uh, 38 verses. And I, I read them and I would love to read them to you. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give you some highlights as to what he was saying. So this is uh, what took place with Paul as he was the very instant, the very moments that he was leaving the Ephesians. And he's very fatherly to them. He's very much their pastor. He's, he cares for them deeply. It's, it's uh, very apparent in this chapter. I would, I would, I would suggest you go read it. It's uh, Acts 20, verse 17 through the rest of the chapter. Amazing, very touching. So... He tells them as he's leaving them. Now, this is another thing I want you to think about. You know, when someone is on their deathbed, they say what is most important to them, right? Tell my family I love them. Tell my wife, my children I love them. Uh, tell so-and-so to keep the faith, be strong, stand in the truth, or, you know, whatever it might be. So these are similar to that. This is Paul's parting words to them. And he, he tells them that even though the Jews plotted against him, uh, now, obviously, this is not a blanket statement. Paul himself was a Jew, so there were believing Jews, but he's, he's specifically talking about the Jews that were not on board yet with the message of Christ, the ones that were still trying to obtain righteousness and, uh, and right standing with God through the law of Moses. So he says, even though the Jews plotted against him, he never hesitated to testify 
to everyone, whether Jew or Greek, repentance toward God and faith in Jesus. He's like, look, I, I've, I've never hesitated to tell the truth to anybody that I come in contact with, no matter what the threat. That's, what I, I, and he, that's boldness. That's what we all need, isn't it? He says, I'm going to Jerusalem. And he doesn't really have a clue what's waiting them, waiting, awaiting him there, but, but that God, by way of his spirit, has, has told him that everywhere you go, bonds and afflictions await you. So prison was coming in his future at that point, right? So he says, I'm leaving you now, but I'm innocent of any man's blood. He said, I declared the whole purpose or whole counsel of God to you while I was with you. So I, I left nothing out. I'm leaving here knowing that I've told you and taught you all that I have to tell you. I, I love that. <laughs> Nothing's left out. It's all been poured out onto the table, and it's, and it's up to you now to receive it and to uh, take it in and make it your own. And then he gives them a warning. He says, be on guard because there's wolves. There's, there's people that are going to come around that are going to try to distract and devour you, and they're going to try and lead you astray. So he, and God's made you overseers. I'm leaving this in your hands. I'm, I'm commending you to God, and I'm telling you, I'm giving you uh, the charge of overseeing God's people. Be diligent in it. He said, and finally he tells him, he says, you know, while I was with you, I worked with my own hands, and I didn't covet any man's silver or gold, but I paid my own way. So I'm leaving you, owing you nothing. My conscience is clear. I've, I've boldly proclaimed the truth. I've shared with you the whole counsel of God. I've never asked for anything uh, from you for support. I've, dealt with, I've, I've worked with my own hands. So I am free in my conscience in every way. I don't owe you spiritually. I don't owe you physically. But I, and I love you. And they all wept and they hugged his neck and they saw him sail out of sight. Well, that was what the Ephesians saw, the last bit of Paul. And then, of course, later, I, I can't imagine how wonderful it might have, must have been to get that letter, the one that we've been studying all this time, the letter to the Ephesians. I'm going to tell you, uh, this has changed me. This has given me a clearer picture of, of who God is and what he has done for us through Christ and the cross and the death and the burial and resurrection. Uh, not only of him, but of me and of you, if you've placed your faith in him. I would encourage you to go back and look at these videos one by one. Take 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes, whatever it is. I, these are all different length videos, but take those few minutes out of your day or out of your week and just walk through. There's 30 videos uh, from the, uh, based in the Ephesian letter, and I have uh, given it my best shot here. And I pray for you. I pray that uh, that spiritual, deeper spiritual understanding and enlightenment comes through uh, these videos and through your study of this Ephesian letter. And I just ask that God would pour out His Spirit in a mighty way, Lord, that that you might give them wisdom, and revelation, and knowledge of Jesus Christ and the hope that we have in Him. All right. Uh, I hope you join me next time. We're going to start a new adventure. We're going to close this uh, letter to the Ephesians today. And I thank you for watching. And I hope you've been helped uh, by the Louis file. I'll see you later.